tell us about this cannabis endeavor you're on. Yes, yes. This is the next chapter. Yes, yes. So, um, so even before that, and as this is a, this is an opportunity I think for everybody is <clears throat> when you look at um, when you look at kind of the American economy and current state of business and the failure of uh, American corporations to be truly diverse in any way. We now have an industry, right? We have an opportunity that is, uh, cannabis is relatively in its infancy where we can actually try to build it in the right way. I mean, this is the thing that was exciting to me. It was like, damn, really it's still not legal federally the way it should be, uh, but already, 80% of CEOs in the industry in the United States are all white men. Nothing against white men, but they can't have 80%. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, I mean, this is, a, this is a real opportunity. They are projecting, forget um, like THC, the component of cannabis that actually would get somebody to get high, just on the CBD side, is projecting out to be a $40 billion industry just in the United States in the next decade. Like if you could get wow. 0.00002%, you know what I mean? Like th start thinking about things like that, getting, looking around the states that are looking for licenses, look around about like maybe you could get in the accessory side. There's something in every piece of this business, whether it is, um, oh, you know what? They're starting to use CBD more in spas. Maybe I want to be the expert at massage therapist that uses CBD. So I, I, before I even talk about what I'm doing, think about what you're going to be doing because there's a lot of money being made. I've seen, I've seen a guy in the last 12 months go from 12 million a year to 20 million. I mean, he told me about the last three years, but go from 12 million a year to 20 million to 200 million a year. It's just one, this is one kid that's happening all over. We deserve, you know what I mean, a piece of that pie. So for me, I couldn't sit on the sidelines and watch this industry grow like this and not be a part of it, which is why I launched the Burn Group in July. Uh, I was fortunate to have great founders, and we were able to raise um, about $18 million the first week of July. We've been hiring. Um, I have a couple people here in New York and an office in Toronto. We're focused on um, e-commerce. Um, we have a outstanding team in um, in Canada. They actually do all of the e-commerce for Drake, um, OVO, which just launched in Japan, the Raptors, the Hawks are part of our team. And then uh, we do obviously traditional branding and then the other pieces we uh, have a distribution. So <clears throat> the distributors that I've worked with in Spirits are now trying to get into a CBD game, to try, as they should. And um, my team basically specializes in helping them pick exactly which brands should go into 500 CVSs around the country or all the Walmarts around the country and not only get in, but because we understand branding, we know what it takes to get out, right? And make sure that you have phenomenal brands. Um, so it's called the Burn Group, B-R-N. Um, look it up, follow us. And I'm um, expecting to build, you know, hopefully the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? I don't know, the cannabis of Ciroc. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear this right? You, you said you were on the spirit side. Well, what happens is, yeah, so right now we're, um, the distributors that I work with are the same distributors that okay. are huge in the spirit, in the space, spirit space, right? So now they're looking at like, okay, well, how can we get a part of this action essentially? And my company is leading them in terms of like, these are the brands you should work with. This is where they should be. This is how you, you know, how you roll it out into different spaces. I won't, I won't, I won't bore you with this, but one of the things that was successful with Ciroc was I was very uh, intentional about um, what's called channel strategy. So one little example would be, like I built the Ciroc Vodka in the military channels, and it was mostly an ignored channel for this kind of space. You actually were part of this too. Mm -hmm. And um, we were able to sell just like 300,000 cases in a channel that people didn't pay as much attention to. So when you think about selling products, it's not always just the traditional spaces of like, I just wanna get in and sell it in Target, like thinking through like, hmm, is there an opportunity in a pet store? Is there an opportunity on this.com? You know what I mean? And how can you, how can you be now in your focus? Do you have, a, have any challenges? And I guess I ask this more from a morality standpoint. You were in the spirits business, now you're in the cannabis business. Yes. Um, but you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> like, but, but I guess at the end of the day, you're, you're shocked. You want to make money. <laughs> but, but there are any times when you're sitting and you're like, hmm, definitely. Maybe, you know, the businesses I meant, they're, they're lucrative, but. Of course. I mean, I would say um, really just more so for like the amount of energy. Um, I know you had Derek, I think, on last week and mm -hmm. uh, Derek Ferguson was the CFO for many years at Combs Enterprise. He also was like the resident minister. And I would definitely occasionally go in and be like, for all this work I'm doing, I probably could be like saving lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so I think more so I absolutely do struggle with like, how could I put this level of energy and make sure like it's, it's real, you know, making sure it's doing the best I can for a community. Now, on the flip side, even with Ciroc, I feel very proud of like, 
I've gone into, I've gone into, I remember going into when Ciroc Peach launched, it was so big, I went to a liquor store in Atlanta and this guy was like, he was telling me how he had made so much money in four months, he was not going to be able to send his daughter to college. Like the amount of jobs wow. we created, the amount of the next 110 rappers who got deals because of our deal, who were able to each hire 50 people, like I feel very good about our contributions in, in, in these businesses where we should be represented, right? If they're in American commerce and they're legal, we should be represented. So I feel good about that. But particularly in the cannabis space, I am looking at his early days, um, but I have been talking to um, some celebrity talent around, I was like, it's, it's unreasonable, it's ridiculous that in one state somebody's making $100 million and the next state somebody's in jail for the same thing. I was like, we, we have to figure out, and I think that the work that, um, uh, reform is doing what Meek and Jay and Mike Rubin and those guys are doing in prison reform. I was like, we need to help. What happens when you get them out, right? They're doing a lot of the great work of like, how do we get people out of jail for these stupid things they shouldn't be in jail for? But then what? You've been in jail for six years for, for weed, which is ludicrous. Um, then you come out and now you're at a, uh, a disadvantage. I was like, where we could help is with that transition. How do you transition either A, from the black market, or B, how do you teach somebody the proper entrepreneurship skills or really advocate for them and make sure they have the right legal support? Um, this is something I talked to Puff about a year and a half ago. When I first was like, I think I wanna leave, he was like, what do you wanna do? I was like, the biggest gap I see, honestly, is in legal support, like you have people who are going to jail just because they have terrible lawyers. You know what I mean? I was like, we should, we need to figure out and bring back like the, the feeling of the 1980s Legal Defense Fund, or 1970s really, um, LADCP, and make sure like you get best in class, legal support, eight two people out, and then when they get out, what are they gonna do next? Um, so my dream would really be to, you know, build this thing up, sell it in three years, and then I would love to spend the rest of my life just focused on that. That's amazing, dear. That's amazing. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.